Hello everyone. Good afternoon, good evening and good morning to all of you based on which part of the world you're joining from. I can see a lot of attendees today and it's good to see all this, uh, good to see that all of you are interested in, in knowing how a blockchain is set up. So we'll be starting the session now. Uh, I am Sanket Saram. I'm the founder and CTO at Blobcity. And the topic for today is how to set up a blockchain in 10 minutes. You will see a question and answer dialog box on the GoToWebinar interface. Uh, please do use this dialog to send any questions to me. Uh, we have a dedicated Q&A session that will be kept towards the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll be answering all the questions that I can uh, right after uh, I'm done with my main presentation. Uh, I won't be taking questions in between because that disturbs uh, other listeners. So, but please do type them in on whichever slide you have a question, type them in on that slide. Uh, I will see them so that I get a context of what question you're asking. And I will try my best to answer all the questions uh, at the end of the session. This webinar is also being recorded. Uh, and the recording of the webinar may be made public uh, after the end. So in case uh, you have some other commitments and you need to drop off in between, uh, please feel free to do so as uh, you've registered for this webinar, uh, you will be getting access uh, to the recording so you can watch it at your own time at leisure uh, later if the current time is not convenient. So this webinar is in the context of series of webinars that we're doing uh, as part of the WRC Blockchain Hackathon. Uh, this is a social cause initiative. Uh, it's uh, co-organized by uh, 2030 Water Resources Group, which is hosted by the World Bank Group, uh, MWRRA, which is Maharashtra's water regulator, and the Bombay Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, the aim of this hackathon is to crowdsource solutions uh, to help solve uh, water challenges by facilitating uh, reuse of water. And we want to use technologies such as blockchain, IoT, AI, and machine learning uh, to track reuse of water across uh, various domains, uh, wherein data from these, uh, from these IoT meters would typically be stored uh, in a blockchain. And based on the performance of these organizations, these organizations would get something called as wastewater reuse certificates. Uh, that is where the WRC term comes from. And the wastewater reuse certificates would essentially be uh, tradable entities, but of course, uh, in a regulated manner, uh, which is regulated by the authorities. Uh, and uh, different companies can basically trade these certificates uh, based on the performance that they do in, in wastewater recycling. So in today's webinar, as we know, we'll be setting up a blockchain uh, and we'll be demonstrating on how you can actually set up a blockchain in as less as 10 minutes. Uh, we will be using the Hyperledger project uh, for the blockchain to set up a private blockchain. Uh, you can visit Hyperledger at https hyperledger.org. Uh, it's an open source initiative uh, to promote the use of blockchain as a technology. Uh, it's not meant for promoting any of cryptocurrencies or uh, any, any efforts in that sense. Uh, it's basically a pure technological project uh, that allows you to set up a blockchain and operate it for various business uses. So Hyperledger Foundation or organization within itself has several, several sub-projects. And the main projects that we'll be using today uh, includes the Hyperledger Fabric and the Hyperledger Composer. Uh, you can also use uh, some of the other projects in the hackathon and any other submissions you do. Uh, but uh, for today's webinar, we're only focusing on the Fabric and the Composer projects. There are several organizations uh, that are partnered with Hyperledger that also promote and sponsor the efforts of the Hyperledger project. Uh, this is a partial list uh, that you see here on the screen. Uh, you can actually visit the URL at the bottom uh, to look at an exhaustive list of members that are associated with the Hyperledger project. So are we ready to get started? 
and set up our first blockchain. And we want to make sure we set it up in 10 minutes because that's what the webinar said. So I'm going to try my best uh, to make it happen in less than 10 minutes. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to start with a blockchain setup is a server on which we can install the blockchain. As you all are aware, we've partnered with uh, DigitalOcean uh, to provide you with uh, free $100 of cloud credits. So each team has received these credits and you can very much use these credits to use the DigitalOcean cloud infrastructure uh, for, for setting up your blockchain on it. You can also use this tutorial to set up the blockchain on your computers but uh, since DigitalOcean are cloud partners for this hackathon, I'll be doing the demo on a DigitalOcean server. So let me open my DigitalOcean uh, console and I'm gonna start from the basics, which is creating a new droplet. So I'm gonna take the Ubuntu version, which is the default uh, OS selection. I'm gonna choose the $40 a month droplet that gives me eight GB of RAM, four cores of CPU, I think this is decent enough for the workload that we have uh, with our blockchain. Uh, you can go with smaller versions of droplets. It starts from $5 a month. You can go for higher versions as well if you so desire. I'm taking the basic standard droplet, which is $40 a month. Uh, I'm gonna choose the San Francisco 2 data center. There are quite a few data centers out here, so you can choose uh, the data center that is closest to you. And, uh, I'm going to choose a temporary SSH key. I just created this so that I can delete it right after this webinar so that uh, security of any of my infrastructure is not compromised because the key is kind of shown uh, when I have to click it. So I'm now going to go and name this droplet. I'm going to call it WRC uh, Hyper Ledger Demo. And let's hit create. So we're going to create the droplet. This will take a few seconds uh, for the droplet to be created. And as soon as it's ready, uh, we should be up and running with the cloud infrastructure. So I'm not starting a timer yet. So uh, I believe my 10 minutes don't start right now. My 10 minutes start from the time we are inside the server and we are ready to start setting up the blockchain. So we have our droplet ready. I'm gonna copy the IP address of this droplet and try connecting to it. I have my console open on another screen here and you can see I have a timer of 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not gonna start the timer yet because I'm just on my computer at this point in time. I still have to connect to my cloud droplet. So I'm gonna SSH into it using my key and the IP address that I copied. It's gonna ask me permission to add this key. I'm gonna say yes. And I'm inside my droplet. I'm gonna go into the OPT folder because that's where I like to usually mess up a few stuff that I wanna do. Now the next step is to download a script that, that we have created for you and it's a single shell script that will install the entire blockchain onto this server. It's just one command that we have to run and it will install the whole of the blockchain. The script that we're gonna run, I have it created on GitHub as a project. So uh, you can copy this link, which maps to the GitHub repository uh, on which I have the script ready and we will be cloning this repository. It will come with the script and then we will run the script on the server. Uh, you can also consider taking a screenshot uh, of this URL if you so desire or write it down or open it in your browsers. And uh, if you want to follow, uh, follow along with me in doing the setup, uh, you can actually do so by trying the script on your computer. So here I have my GitHub page, which is the same repository that we have. It's open here. I'm gonna copy this URL 
of the repository from here and I'm going to clone this repository onto the machine, virtual machine that we have. Okay, it's cloned, that was fast. It's called Hyperledger Installer. I'm going to go inside that. Now there's a single script which says Hyperledger Installer.sh. I'm going to run this script and this should do the magic for me. But before I run the script, I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. I want to see if the blockchain actually gets installed in 10 minutes. Timer is ticking. We are starting the script. Let's wait and watch. I'm starting with a basic Ubuntu server. There are several prerequisites that are required to actually uh, install and start uh, the Hyperledger projects. Uh, one of them includes uh, Docker. We will be using Docker images. Uh, so we'll be taking the Docker repositories that Hyperledger publishes and, and using them right out of the box. We also need uh, Node.js set up on the computer. Uh, so the script will do all of this. It will set up Node.js, it'll set up Docker, it'll set up Docker Compose as an additional component. And it will also download the uh, related Hyperledger projects, uh, configure them on the machine and, and uh, not it won't boot it up though. So it will just configure it. And once it's done, we have to run one single command and that command will boot up uh, the, the entire Hyperledger network with us, for us, uh, along with the Composer project. And the Composer project should uh, allow us to basically compose, uh, uh, compose some uh, messages onto the Hyperledger, like submit transactions, create uh, user identities, and, and, and basically work on a network. So this script could take a while. It may or may not work on other operating systems, uh, but if you're using the DigitalOcean server and the Ubuntu 18 uh, version, uh, it's gonna work for sure. That's the computer I'm demonstrating it on. Uh, other operating systems may require minor tweaks uh, in the script. So you can actually follow uh, the Hyperledger uh, official documentation that they give on their website for setting up uh, the Hyperledger projects. I have followed the same documentation and made a easy to use uh, single script uh, that you can run. But if you wanna do a custom installation, uh, feel free to actually read through the Hyperledger docs uh, and install it uh, as per your needs. So if anyone wants to take a coffee break, now is a good time. Uh, so this could take a while. I think we still have a little more than seven minutes left. And I hope it happens in less than 10 minutes because that's what we're targeting here. I'm gonna keep showing you the complete installation logs so that when you try it and something fails, uh, you can come back to this video and check uh, what all installed in, in when I was running it against what is installed when you are running it and that may allow you to diagnose any installation errors that you face. But I'm reasonably confident uh, if you use the script on a Ubuntu 18 version, uh, it should run uh, exactly as it is running right now. Don't forget, I'm not running the script on my computer. Uh, I'm running it on the cloud server. So the blockchain that will be started, it won't start on my computer. It will start on the DigitalOcean server that I've chosen. So I will have to remotely connect uh, to that blockchain to do any operations uh, on it.
So far so good. I believe it's executing smoothly and we may just about get it done in 10 minutes. Okay, so that's the half point. We're done with five minutes so far. We have a little less than five minutes remaining right now. And the script is still executing. This will probably be the simplest blockchain setup you've ever seen. Just run one command and sit and watch for 10 minutes and you have your own private blockchain up and running. There are a lot of dependencies and a lot of projects that need to be set up. Hyperledger has really made it very easy uh, with setting up blockchain and using the Docker containers that they publish uh, makes it even more easier to, to use it right out of uh, the box. So we are just basically installing all the supporting dependencies that we need and the main blockchain itself will be started from Docker. So here you can see it's actually pulling the Hyperledger Fabric slash Fabric Peer from Docker, then Fabric Orderer, Fabric CC Environment. Uh, these are Docker images uh, that are now getting pulled. And uh, these images are pre-configured and pre-published by Hyperledger. So we have about three more minutes remaining. The script still continues to execute and it is getting me a little worried now. I'm not so sure, so sure anymore whether we're going to hit that 10 minutes mark. Okay, I guess I just had to stay calm. There's nothing I can do. It's gonna take its own time. So you can see it did configure the fabric CouchDB. Uh, Hyperledger does internally use CouchDB for some of its data storage. And it's the last two minutes and something still seems to be building and installing. Okay, it's still happening. This is not good. I'm not sure it's happening in 10 minutes. Okay, there's some post install operations going on right now, but that's probably just for a single module. It is booting up the containers. Okay, it'll sleep for 15 seconds. I just have about a minute. Okay, fabric start timeout, command succeeded, and the admin card is created, and yes, we have done it.
I'm going to stop the timer. Installation has succeeded and we still have 43 seconds remaining on the clock. We now have a blockchain running on our DigitalOcean cloud server. And it all happened with 43 more seconds to spare. Now I'm going to get on to GitHub and copy one command from there, which basically says compose a playground. And this command should start a visual playground for me to play around and actually do some test transactions on my blockchain. Now this Composer Playground command has worked and I can see that the server is started. It started on port 8080. And this would not work, of course, if the previous installation had not succeeded. So the next step is I need to open the browser on this URL. But if I was running uh, the Hyperledger system on my computer, localhost would work. Uh, it won't work in this case because we are running it on a cloud server. So let me first get the IP address of the cloud server. I'm going to pick up this IP. All I need is a new tab. And in this new tab, I'm going to paste the IP and I'm going to paste 8080, which is the port number, and I'm going to hit it. Let's wait and watch what happens. And yes, we have our Hyperledger Composer Playground open in the browser right in front of us. So it says, welcome to Hyperledger Composer Playground. And in this web sandbox, you can deploy, edit, and test business network definitions, have a play, and learn what Hyperledger Composer Playground is all about. So let's blockchain. So the first and foremost thing that one needs to do to set up the blockchain is create a new business network. And we can call this a test network. And it could be admin at test.com. And Hyperledger provides a sample composer network, a basic sample network. We're going to take the same default. There are various types of networks that one can choose from. So I'm going to hit the deploy button and let this network create itself. We can see that a network is now here. We can connect to this network. So we are inside the network. It's suggesting that we deploy these changes that it is proposing. So there are participants in a network, there are assets in a network, and there are transactions in the sample network. And these are basically called sample participant, sample asset, and sample transaction. I'm going to deploy changes so that this network is ready for us to use. I'm going to go into test we can see that there are categories for sample participant, sample asset, and sample transactions. These transactions was the initial setup that's done. Let's get into sample participants. We need to start by first creating a participant. So let's say we give a participant a participant ID, which is one. I'm going to give a name, say Sanket, surname, Saran. I'm going to make an account with my name, which is a participant. I'm going to say create new. Now it's created a participant with my name. Now I need an asset. An asset basically just holds a value. So an asset ID could be A1, right? And the owner ID can be participant 1, which is me, which was the participant that I gave. And it could have an initial value of 0. So I could say create new, right? So we have now a sample asset. Uh, whose asset ID is A1 and the participant, the owner to which it belongs is owner ID 1. Now I need to make a transaction against this asset and transaction basically changes the old value with the new value. So I can now make a transaction and I can say the asset on which the transaction is, is A1 
and the new value that I want to set is the value of 10. So this would basically overwrite the previous value of 0 with the value of 10. And it doesn't, in a blockchain, nothing overwrites itself. So it basically adds an extra, extra block at the end of the blockchain. Uh, and these parameters, which is the class and the asset, allow us to determine which block it is referring to. And at every point in time, we can take the latest value that corresponds to this asset to know what is the current value of the asset. So in this example, the asset could actually be the data point coming from a meter, or it could even be the wastewater reuse certificates that this particular asset holds. Uh, it's a string value, so we can save anything. If it was a meter, we could have saved the timestamp, we could have saved the pH value, we could have set the BOD, uh, and several aspects that allow us to determine quality of water, including volume of water itself. Uh, so this is simple text and it belongs to an asset and each meter IoT meter could be an asset. In this case, I'm just going to set a random value of 10. This is for demonstration purposes. I'm going to submit this transaction and it's going to say yes, submit transaction successful, which means the transaction was successfully executed. So if I go into all transactions, I can see that there is a new entry here. It's a sample transaction. I can go and view record. It gives me the timestamp at which it was executed. It gives me the transaction ID of this transaction. This transaction ID is unique for every transaction, the asset it belonged to, and the new value that was set. This timestamp is automatically generated, right? So I can look at events related to this transaction and I can see this is the actual transaction event that happened. This is the unique identifier uh, for the transaction. So on and so forth, we can create more assets. We could have an asset called A2. It could have value 50 to start with. It may belong to the same participant one. We can also create more participants and different assets per participant. So typically you would, a participant would relate to one organization and the assets would be multiple assets within that organization. So if one organization uh, has multiple IoT meters, you could create multiple assets for the same organization, like A1 and A2 could actually be different meters uh, for the same organization. And then you can go in and submit transactions uh, against these assets. So this is just one example of how a simple or how the sample network that they have provided works. We can look at other types of networks as well by creating uh, a new network. Let's consider the case of creating a trade network. In this case, there are various types of networks that are uh, shown here. You can also create your custom network configuration file and upload it and, and build using that network. So it says drop here to upload or browse. So basically, uh, these are some sample configurations provided, but you can actually create your own configuration and upload it here. So Hyperledger has sufficient documentation uh, to tell you the various strategies that you can use and how to make these files to specify the network topologies. Uh, so please do read through it. Uh, I'll show you one more example right now, which is a trade network. And let's keep a trade network, admin at trade network. And let's hit deploy. The same process as before. This is a totally different network. So you can actually see there are two networks, test.com, trade network. I'm going to go connect to trade network this time. Then I'm going to deploy changes. Right, so this network basically has a trader, it has commodity, and it has a trade. So you have basically traders, uh, which is basically similar to the participants that we had last time. You have a commodity that is being traded, and then you have transactions uh, on that commodity. So here I'll create a new participant. I can say first name Sanket, last name Saram, trader ID, which is the unique ID of the trader. I'm going to put that as one. Let me create another participant, which is say John Doe, last name Doe, 
And let's say we give this person a trader ID of two, create new. So we have two traders now who can trade between themselves. Let's say we have a commodity that we want to trade. The commodity could be a WRC. So we can call this uh, main exchange, maybe WRC. We can actually call this waste water reuse certificates. Uh, let's give the trading symbol as WRC and let's give the exchange at WRC EX, which is exchange. And let's say we have 1000 WRCs to start with. And the owner of these WRCs currently is trader one, which is me, Sanket Saram. So let's create new and we have a WRC created. Now I can go into all transactions. I can actually see the latest transaction, which was addition of an asset, which is a WRC, WRC exchange was added with quantity of 1000. Now let's see how a submit transaction looked like. So in this case, I have multiple types of submit transactions. I'm gonna choose a trade transaction. In the trade transaction, I have to choose the commodity. So I'm gonna choose the commodity as WRC. And the new owner for this commodity would be owner number two. So what this transaction would basically mean that the entire commodity WRC that we had created, which had a quantity of 1000, which was assigned to owner number one, is now being transferred to owner number two. So if we submit this transaction, it says it's a successfully executed. I can actually go and view the last record, which was a trade record. It says commodity WRC, new owner is number two. This is the transaction ID and the timestamp at which the transaction was executed. So something like this could actually be used to transfer WRCs from one account to another account. Uh, this is just uh, an example and there are various, various strategies uh, in which a blockchain can be configured. And uh, as part of the hackathon, we really want to drive some innovation on some of these strategies, how you configure the blockchain, how you store data into it, how do you analyze the data that's inside the blockchain, uh, so there are a lot of projects, including Node.js libraries, Java libraries, uh, Go libraries that you can use to connect to this blockchain and programmatically execute transactions. If you don't want to use the crowd interface, uh, you can also uh, read data that's inside this blockchain uh, programmatically. So this was just a simple example. I do encourage that you do uh, use the uh, uh, upload feature that you get here, drop here to upload a browse. So you create a custom configuration and setup, and you can upload that file here and create a blockchain based on your requirements uh, that supports storage of metadata, and it supports uh, issuance of wastewater reuse certificates, and something that also supports uh, smart contracts. Uh, you can feel free to use uh, other uh, blockchain systems as well. You can also use maybe the Ethereum network uh, to establish uh, smart contracts. So you could have combinations of Hyperledger and Ethereum for all you know. Uh, innovation is something we really want and we want to see what are the innovative ways uh, you store data into the blockchain. So did this help? I hope it did. For those of you who are setting up a blockchain for the first time, I hope this has really simplified uh, setting up the blockchain. And I know I did not cover a lot of basics of the blockchain, um, and but the intention was to assume that uh, the audience out here uh, at a high level knows how, how a blockchain works. Uh, but when we put out a team building form, we got a lot of requests. Uh, saying that, uh, you know, uh, there are teams that have never set up a blockchain before. Uh, so there may be some challenges in setting it up for the first time. So we thought we should do this webinar to help out these teams uh, in, in, in making it really easy to set up a blockchain. And, and I hope you can leverage uh, the DigitalOcean Cloud credits uh, and, and this webinar to set up your blockchain uh, we really want to get some innovative ideas on how you would store data into the blockchain, how you would configure it, and uh, what are the various ways in which uh, you would have uh, you would identify uh, you know data fraud 
that's coming from the meters. So whether you can run uh, AI and ML algorithms on blockchain or even AI and alg ML algorithms on raw data itself to detect data fraud, storage of data in the blockchain, um, issuance, issuance of WRCs onto the blockchain, setting, setting up smart contracts uh, between the regulators. We really want to see some of that innovation. So uh, for those of you who've not registered for the hackathon, but maybe are a little more inspired now to register for it, uh, there is still time. Uh, we take final submissions on uh, 17th of February uh, in some countries, and it'll be 18th of February, 12 a.m., uh, or a little further in, in some other countries. So uh, do make your submissions. We want a presentation. Uh, we look forward to a look forward to a video wherein you present your presentation and if you can show a blockchain implementation uh, that's really amazing if you can't show an implementation but you can just uh, tell in a presentation on what your strategy is uh, even that is acceptable so we don't mandate that you need a presentation that you need a functional prototype uh, there is 15 percent score for a functional prototype so if you have it uh, you do count towards those 15 percent but if you don't have it, there's still 85% scoring on the concept and idea and the innovation that you're doing. Uh, so please do go ahead and contribute. And I hope I've helped uh, a little uh, for those teams that have never set up a blockchain before to be now able to set up a blockchain and use it. So let's get to the much awaited question and answers. I see a lot of questions piling up and I hope I can answer all of them before the time's up.